In this toolpath guide, we'll be discussing the fluting toolpath, which is one of the 2.5D toolpaths you'll find in VCarve and Aspire. We'll be covering some basic examples of how this toolpath can be used for different projects, including the simple basic toolpath you see in front of you, using the toolpath to create some drainage lines for a chopping board, using the toolpath to create a number of interesting textures useful for other projects, and finally, another example where we can use the fluting toolpath to create the top of a seat. This will hopefully demonstrate a number of ways you can use this toolpath for your own projects to create your own designs for the projects as you need them. Let's close down this and we shall start from the beginning. Let's start by creating a new file. And for this file, we're going to just create a simple 36 inch wide project with six inches in height quarter of an inch thickness, and we'll have a Z0 to the material surface and the XY data position to the lower left corner. We'll click OK, and we have our material space set up for us. We're going to need three identical lines straight across the design in the Z direction. So let's draw a polyline. And for this one, I know that the first point of my first line will be starting at x4, y 1.5. I can then just click add to create the first point. And then I know the second point for this line is going to be at 32 x and then 1.5 y. So I'll just put in 32 there, click add, and you can see my line has now been created. I'll finish the line as we don't need this tool anymore and close it out. I now want to create two additional copies of this equally spaced up the job space. So I'm going to use the Array Copy tool for this. Select my vector, and I'm going to want three rows in Y and an offset of 1.5 inches between them. And when I click Copy Now, you'll see I've got three identical copies evenly spaced up the job. Let's close out the Array Copy tool, and we can now move across to the fluting toolpath. I'll use the Quick Switch command up the top of the drawing panel here. And that takes me across to the toolpaths. Let's check on the material setup page first, just to make sure that everything is correct there, as, as we would always want to do with every project. The material thickness and the XY datum set up in the original job setup sheet are still correct, so we'll leave those, as is the Z0, which is still on the material surface. We don't have a 3D model in this project, so we can skip the model position in the material. And I just want to check my rapid Z gaps above the material are correct. Uh, one eighth of an inch is fine in my project, but you may want to check this for your own to make sure it suits your machine. Likewise, the home and start position for X and Y and Z are all correct for my machine, but again, check these for your machine. Let's click OK, and then open up the fluting toolpath. With the fluting toolpath panel open here, you can see we have some familiar settings such as the cutting depth with the start depth, although in this case we have a flute depth instead of a cut depth. We'll set the start depth as zero for this particular example. We'll put a flute depth of 0.2 inches and we'll select a ball nose tool. We'll go with the largest one we've had, which is a quarter of an inch ball nose. And we'll just click select. In this example, we'll have ramping from the start and end. The different options here are as they are described in the screen. So this top option here, ramp over the complete length, is as you would describe, it would start at a depth of zero at the beginning of the toolpath and cut down to the full cut depth at the end of the, the toolpath. If you use ramping at the start, it will ramp for either the ramp length or the ramp percentage of the line. So this, for example, would ramp down to the full flute depth over 15% of the line and then be cutting at the full depth for the rest of the line. And in our case, we're going to be using ramp at start and end and we'll have it ramp for 25%. So it will cut down for 25% of the length of the line, cut at the full depth for another 50% and then flute back up again at the end of the line for the last 25%. We can then have it either as a linear ramp or a smooth ramp. The linear ramp will go down at an angle and then sharply cut off to the flat depth at the bottom uh, of the flute. Whereas with smooth, it will start cutting sharply down and then level out to a smooth flat bottom. 
we'll be using smooth in this option and we'll now just click calculate. You can see I've now got my three toolpath lines and if I click on preview all toolpaths you can now see my final cut results. Let's change the angle so that you can get a better look at them and as you can see here we cut into the material smoothly, travel along and then smoothly come back out of the material. Let's close down this project for now and then we can start up our next example file. We'll open up an existing file and we're going to open our cutting board flute vector file. Here you can see a basic design for a chopping board which will have fluted grooves down the centre of the board, a fluted vector around the edge of the board and then a pocket at the end of the board to complete our chopping board design. One item of note on this is that this outline vector is actually two separate vectors. If we use the node editing tool, you'll see that we have the start node here at this end of the board, which is where we want it for this design. Likewise, the bottom line is the same. We have the start point here. This means that when we come to create our fluting toolpath, the flute will begin at this point on the vector instead of at the other end, which is what we want for this design. Let's cancel out of the node editing for now, and we will then move across to the toolpath panel. With, as with all our projects, let's go into the material setup to make sure everything is correct. We're going to have a thick material of 1.5 inches, uh, which would be suitable for a thick chopping board. Our XY datum is in the lower left corner, which suits our machine as is the Z0 is set to the material surface. Again, we can skip the material position as there are no 3D models. And we have a rapid Z gap above the material of 0.2 inches, which is fine for my machine. As is always the case, please check for your machine to make sure that this is suitable. The home and start positions again are in the lower left corner and 0.8 inches above the material. We can click OK to close the material setup and we shall open the fluting toolpath. For the fluting toolpath for this one, what we're going to do is select all of the vectors, excluding that pocket toolpath vector that we'll be using later on. Now that I have all of these vectors selected, I can spot one issue that will be causing problems with my fluting later on. As you can see here, all of our vectors have got the start nodes at this end of the board, which is where we want them. This vector is out of place though and has one in the wrong position. So what we can do, unselect everything, press N on the keyboard for node editing, and then we want to select our one vector that's out of position. We can then move our mouse to the far end and hover over what is currently the black end node and right click. We can then make this the start position. As you can see, the green node is now at the end of the board where we wish it to be. Let's right click to turn off node editing and then we can reselect our vectors once more. As you can see, the node is now at the correct end for this project. For this fluting toolpath, what we'll be doing, a start depth of just below the material surface. So this will just be 0.05 inches, a flute depth of a quarter of an inch. We'll be using a large ball nose tool. So let us select and we don't have the tool that we're going to want. So in this case, I shall add a new tool. I'll change the tool type to ball nose. The diameter for this tool is going to be half an inch. And I can create my settings. You'll need to set up your tool as befitting your physical tool. But in this case, a pass depth of a quarter of an inch and a step over of 10% is perfectly suitable. I'll click apply and select this tool for our project. We want to have the flute type for this one set to ramp over the complete length so that we have even cuts across the whole length of the fluted vector and we'll be making the ramp type a linear flute. Let's click calculate and you can see my toolpaths have been created. Let's preview all the toolpaths and have an angle view to see the results. As you can see, I now have got shallow cuts leading down to deeper cuts further down the board where my pocket will later be cut. For the two vectors on the outside as well, we start with a shallow cut at the left hand side. As they then sweep around and go towards the right, they cut deeper and deeper down to our desired flute depth. 
Let's close out of our toolpath preview form and go back to our 2D view so we can begin making our pocket toolpath on the right hand side here. You'll notice that the vector that we have here for our pocket is slightly larger than the vector we use for the fluting. Fluting always cuts on the lines, so when we created our pocket vector, we had to keep that in consideration for the diameter of the tool that we were using for the fluting toolpath, so that the top and bottom flutes would naturally fall into the pocket. We'll create our pocket toolpath using this vector selected. And we only want to use one tool for this to keep things nice and simple. So we'll remove the existing tools, set our cut depth to be 0.3, and we want to use the same ball nose bit that we use for our fluting toolpath, our ball nose half an inch. I'll select that and then just click the select button. Now, because we don't want our ball nose bit to be pocketing this entire area, we shall also add in an end mill to this pocket toolpath. So we shall go back to select and I will use a quarter inch end mill tool, which has a much larger step over than our ball nose does. The material that my tool is going to be cutting is quite soft, so I shall set this to a 0.3 pass depth so that it will cut the entire toolpath in a single pass for me. And I shall click select. The software automatically tries to put a ball nose at the end of the pocketing toolpath, as that is the correct way we want it to be lined up. If you find you want to change the order of the tools in the pocket toolpath though, you can just select a tool and use the up and down arrows here on the side to move it up and down. We want the end mill to be cutting first though, so we'll put that back at the top of the list. And now that we have everything set up, we can now just click calculate. We'll preview the first toolpath to show you exactly what this is going to do. So the pocket Toolpath 1, clear one, is the end mill toolpath. We'll preview that toolpath, and as you can see, it has cut out the main area of the pocket for us. Then we can just run the second toolpath, which is our ball nose bit, and that has cleaned up the edges for us to give us our final pocket result. And as you can see, with just a couple of vectors and a fluting toolpath and a pocket, we've created a simple chopping board design. Let's now move on to our next example of a fluting toolpath. So let's close out this project and continue on. So we've now covered the basics of the fluting toolpath and also shown an example of how you could use it in a project. Let's open up an existing file. And for this one, we're going to be showing you how to use it to create some interesting texture work for parts of a larger project. The file will be texture flute vectors and we'll open that up and you can see here we have what looks like a number of lines. On a closer inspection, as I click on one of them, you'll see that it is only a short line that is then repeated across the material space. You'll also notice that these lines are slightly offset for every other set of lines. So we have four short lines followed by three short lines and then followed by four and three and so on. What we can do is apply a fluting toolpath to these to create a textured panel which you could then use to, for example, create wall displays or something similar. So let's select all of our vectors with the Control A shortcut. Then we can go across to the toolpath panel using the quick move command. And then we can start up our fluting toolpath. As you can see on our fluting toolpath, once again, we have all of the start points in order. So they all lead from bottom to top on every single vector. Now we can just choose some fluting toolpath settings and see what sort of texture results we get. For this one, I'm going to select uh, ramping at start and end with my half inch ball nose and a flute depth of quarter of an inch. I'll set the ramp time to smooth, click calculate and preview. As you can see, we have a short slotted section which would look quite interesting once that's been filled in with some color. Let's simulate that quickly just with a global color fill and let's set that to a black. Let's reset the preview, reopen the fluting toolpath by double clicking the toolpath name and then make some small adjustments to this. So let's set the ramp to 100% now. Hit calculate once more. 
and preview that same toolpath. As you can see, with just a change of a single value, we've now got an entirely different texture. I would recommend experimenting with this and just trying out different values to see what sort of effects you can achieve. Let's reset this one more time and try something a bit different with a different shape tool. So let's reset the preview, double click on the fluting toolpath name once more. Now we're going to try a different type of pit. So let's try a flute depth of 0.35 inches and we'll change the bit using the select option there to a V bit of 90 degrees. Click on select to choose the bit and then we're going to change it to a ramp over the complete length and we're going to change it to a linear style cut. Let's click on calculate and then we can choose to preview our selected toolpath. As you can see here, we've now got a rather striking teardrop effect coming from our V-bit cutting in as a flute. I'll do one quick final example of this, showing a much larger bit being used. So let's go back into our fluting toolpath by double clicking the name once more. And this time the tool we're going to select is a large form tool. So let's choose our OG tool and click select. And then we'll ramp from start to finish with 100% once more. We'll have it smoothed and then we'll click calculate. Now when we preview this, you'll see that it's got a very, very striking texture effect to it from a very simple toolpath. This could be used to create any number of textures from just a number of lines and a fluting toolpath applied to all of them using a variety of different tools. So please experiment with this and see what sort of effects you can achieve with your various tools that you have available. Let's close down this for now and we'll start on our final example. Let's open up our final example, going to the open an existing file and we'll open up this seat flute vectors file. This is created by one of our forum members, Bob Jr. What Bob Jr. has created here was a set of vectors that are straight and then radii around a semicircle movement and then back down and straight to create a horseshoe shape. When applied with a fluting toolpath, this will create a scooped seat arrangement. Let's switch to the toolpath panel. Go to the material setup as before to double check all of our settings. As you can see here, we've got the material thickness set at 0.75. The datum is set to the center currently and on our machine, we want it set up to the lower left. The Z0 is the material surface as usual. And we have our rapid Z gaps up of the material of only 0.05 inches. This is so that the machine will wrap it at a very low height to get from the start of one cut to the next, which is useful when you have many line cuts to perform, such as this. The home and start position are x0 and y0 as before, and our z gap above the material is only 0.25. So we can click OK to close this down. Let's click back into the job space and then use Control A to select everything. We can now open our fluting toolpath and prepare it for our design. We're going to go with a setup for this of uh, only 0.3 inches flute depth. We're going to switch the tool out for a quarter of an inch end mill. So we'll select that from the tool database and pick select. We want it to ramp at the start and end of the tool path with 100% ramp percentage. And we want it to be set to smooth. So with all this set, we can now click calculate and now preview our selected toolpath. You can see here it's made quick work of the material and created our fluted seat arrangement. So you can see the results we have here and really we're just demonstrating the possibilities of using the fluting toolpath in much more unusual ways. We've seen users create bowl shapes and other curved shapes using the similar method of using closely positioned straight line vectors. And this concludes this tutorial on the many ways you can use the fluting toolpath. If you want to learn how to save your toolpaths that we have covered in this tutorial, refer to the toolpath saving guide. I hope you've enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.